Hi friends. In this module, we'll cover uh, import activity within Automation Studio, right? So if I come into activities, you will see the the different uh, activities that we have here under Automation Studio. In the previous module, we looked at you know the various options and how to configure file transfer. Uh, so the next one that we will look at in this video is the import file. So before we actually go in and configure, let's look at uh, what are the various options that we have for import activity. So there's two major ways that you can actually import uh, a file into, um, import a file data into Marketing Cloud Data Extensions or List, okay? So uh, the first one that you see here is something that we kind of briefly covered when we did the file transfer activity, right? So if an encrypted or a decrypted file comes in on, on the file transfer, uh, through file transfer into the enhanced FTP, the file transfer activity will actually then uh, unzip and decrypt it and then move it to the safe house and then import activity can actually read that particular decrypted file uh, from the safe house and then you know put the update the data into uh, the Salesforce marketing cloud data extension right the second option is like you know let's say it was not encrypted at all like you know it's just a, a regular CSV file that we can directly read from and it's, it's in the FTP folder or, or an external location right so in which case like you know um, uh, mark from marketing cloud we can use the import activity to directly go uh, and read from that particular file and import the data in so the the second option is usually not recommended uh, because the, the files right now uh, pretty unsecure on the uh, FTP folder like usually like you know when we have uh, transfers done they're usually in encrypted and zip format because of the file size as well right so option one is the usual uh, recommended approach that we take especially if you're keeping files on the FTP but uh, we do have the option uh, to go ahead and, and uh, use the import activity to read directly from files that are placed in the FTP folder if they are not zipped or encrypted. Okay, so uh, with that, let's go back into uh, Automation Studio here into Import File. Uh, under Create Activity, you can go ahead and choose Import File Activity here. And then when you come in, so uh, let's give an uh, uh let's see import order details from ftp so uh, if you want to like send a notification uh like once uh, whenever this import is completed you can do it here but uh, otherwise like you can uh, this is because you can actually manually run just this uh, import definition alone um like just to see if it works uh, and if that step works, then if you want to like kind of notify yourself, you can actually uh, put that in. But otherwise, like you know, as part of the automation workflow, uh, if within the automation workflow in the overview, when you when you want to run the different steps within the automation, you can have notifications set up that as well. So that in a future video, when we look at like you know how to test some of these, like and you know, how to run some examples, we will look at how to get notifications uh, sent to your email ID as well. Okay. For now, we'll just skip. Uh, this one for uh, this option here for the email uh, going to next so here is where you actually specify like you know where are you getting your import file from um, you can either specify uh, the import folder uh, that you see here or one of the uh, folders within the import uh, subfolder so this you have to be very careful on this part like you know so for import file activity uh, you the folder must be either the import or a subfolder within the import folder right it will not take it if you actually place it on any other folders outside the import folder so if I keep it under the import it'll actually choose like you know what are the various folder options that I've actually um, configured here so if it was under the file drops folder which is again a subfolder under there it will actually look for the file there now uh, if I come here I can see a file there called order details. So, so if I come in and, and, and enter the name as order details.csv, you will see like it actually identifies that there is currently a file like this in the in the file location. Um, and like you know, uh, if I actually change this to a different folder, and if it doesn't find the file, it'll actually tell you it's empty right now. And if you try to run it right now, it'll fail. Uh, in in most cases, like you know, if you're actually uh, expecting the file to come in at a later point in time, this is fine because uh, you probably wouldn't run it uh, when you're configuring it, right? But if you're testing it, then uh, ensure like you know you you place the file in the FTP folder before you run uh, the particular automation, otherwise it'll, it'll fail, right? You can still go ahead and configure this even if the file is not existing in your target location. For now, I'll just keep it in the import folder uh, uh, so that it shows up here. Uh, and then <coughs> on the right side you will see different options 
the default options you can leave it as is um, and then this ones we have seen when we did the file transfer as well if you want to have additional options to skip the the import uh, if uh, based on the number of hours or the fail if the file is older or if you want to like in a buffer uh, for a certain number of hours before you import uh, the data in okay pretty much standard and when you move to the next one this is where you actually specify what is your target data extension like so you can either choose a data extension or a list so in our examples we will go with the data extension so I'm actually importing the order details uh, CSV files so in which case like it will go to the order details data extension so keep in mind like when you're using the import activity the data extension should already exist in marketing cloud there is no option for you to go ahead and create it uh, through this uh, wizard here right you know it has to already exist and you need to know which one you need to like map to right so you can go ahead and, and select a, a pre-created uh, data extension uh, in this case we'll use the order details DE then when you move to the next step here is where you actually have the mapping like you know you have to say okay what are we going to do when once we encounter the the file do you want to uh, add the new records that you see here do you want to update only the records or do you want to add and update which is kind of like an absurd operation or do you want to overwrite now overwrite is uh, is a unique option that we have here uh, where it actually says it will actually delete everything, uh, all the records in the existing data extension, and then it will it will update it with the the new records that that's it's found uh, in in your file. It, all the records that you find in your file will just uh, push that into to the data extension. So your existing data will all get wiped out. So they usually give a warning whenever uh, you try to use this particular option to ensure the saying that you know well, if you do that you will lose all the data that you already have in the data extension so be very careful unless you're very very sure that you know yeah every time the data comes in you just want to get rid of the data that's already there in the data extension you can go ahead and use the the override option otherwise like most of the times you will just use add and update and then you can set a retention policy in your in your data extension to like you know, clean up old data as well the mapping you have three different options you have like map by header row uh, which is usually the common one like you know so you ensure the file has like the headers in it and then um, it, it actually would map to the specific uh, uh, the columns in the, the data extension uh, if you do by ordinal it actually tells you which column to map to the, the specific uh, columns or the fields in, in the data extension if you're doing map manually uh, you can actually choose a file so if I have the order details dot file here uh, then I can actually go in and manually uh, you know choose the mapping right here as is right so it will not let me go forward if I don't do this if I use map manually right so I'll just go ahead and remove that option we can go back to map by header row we keep it as add or update and then when you go next it actually tells you okay this is the summary of what you've chosen the file will be in the import folder this is the file name that you're looking at um, and depending upon if it's a schedule or a file drop whenever you're actually calling this one it will actually go ahead and start the import right uh, and then it will update uh, this particular data extension uh, you said map by header row and you want to add or update the data extension now uh, when we go back here the other option that I showed you like you know this is the one that you're actually option number two where you're actually directly importing it from the FTP folder now what if like you know it was like you know it was the uh, uh, done by a file transfer first it's, it's likely decrypting the file and placed on the safe house in which case you will actually choose the file location of the safe house notice that you know you'll not be able to see what's in the safe house like I said earlier it's a, it's a secure location so all you need to do is just go ahead and, and specify the the file name here it will not be able to tell you like you know, if the file exists or not like you know, so uh, you would probably expect the file to be there if the previous file transfer activity ran correctly now the file naming uh, pattern is similar to how we actually used um, in the earlier examples in, in the file transfer activity so you can use the same uh, file naming pattern here if you wish to um, in our case we're just going to use the order details.csv as is so in the, even in the safe house path it's, it's just the same like you know just as the one that we used for uh, the import uh, directly from the FTP folder uh, you configure you specify your data extension uh, you can give the adder update and map by header row and in this particular case you will see the file location is exact target safe house here all the other details are just the same as the other option okay I'm not gonna save this one I'll just cancel out from here because I already have a few configured here so I'll go ahead and show you how uh, a probably uh, a sample workflow when you create it how does it look like so assume like you know there's a file drop that's coming in to the folder 
and uh, once that file drop comes in we want to like you know initiate a file transfer activity and assume that you know the file is actually uh, an encrypted file right so we want to use the file transfer and followed by the import file uh, activity right so in file transfer let's say I have uh, here like decrypt and unzip products so if I choose that one it what it does is actually it's, it's actually an inbound uh, file transfer it looks for uh, the products.zip.pgp which is encrypted and compressed uh, on the import folder <coughs> so once that comes in it will actually uh, come uh, it will unzip the compressed file and decrypt the file and then transfer that to the safe house now the products.csp file is on the safe house once this is done the next step like our import activity uh, we have to choose this one that we have configured what it does is actually will go to the safe house it will look for the products.csp file and then it will update and or update uh, using the map by header row option the product catalog data extension so that's the data extension that will get updated once it reads the data from uh, that particular file so this is how you actually configure an automation workflow uh, using file transfer and import file uh, if we were directly reading from the FTP folder we would just skip this step uh, we will just only have the import file and it will be configured to go ahead and just directly read from the the FTP folder uh, on on the enhanced FTP, right? So that's uh, primarily a high level overview of like how we use the import activity in Automation Studio. In the next video and module, we will look at a few workflow examples involving files, mainly with you know using this file transfer and import activities, and how do you test some of them like you know using the run once option or when you actually drop a file automatically into the FTP. And then you can actually see the data updating automatically in the data extensions once the import activity runs as well. Okay. Hope this was helpful. Please do leave your feedback and comments and do subscribe for further updates. Thank you for watching.